Well, good morning, everybody. Let's walk through some of the highlights here of this uh, near-term and long-term forecast. We're going to start off with temperatures. It's a very, very mild day throughout much of the plains today with 60s and 70s running from north to south here. But there is a low that is curling up right here later on today into tonight that's going to start in parts of Manitoba and uh, move farther to the east. And with it, we need some snow on the back side of this. So get out and enjoy the very, very mild December weather while you can. Our new updated forecast from the WPC continues to show the flooding risk in parts of the Pacific Northwest, excuse me, Northwest continuing through this weekend. Here's the first system that leaves and runs through the Southern Canadian Prairie, increasing the snow here, but a larger area behind this has trended drier. The big reason for that, the system we've been watching that was hopefully gonna develop in much of the Midwest has continued to press to the east. So you can see here that the latest forecasts are showing much wetter conditions farther to the east, including some potential for some bigger snows in parts of New England. So overall, the change that we're seeing here is one that's going to be unfavorable for a big section of the country in terms of moisture return. But if you've got field work left to do in this area, you've now bought yourself a bit more time. What we've had over the last 72 hours, though, just continues to add up incredibly heavy rains in the Pacific Northwest. While much of the rest of the country was drier, outside of some scattered light snow and some lighter rain that moved through parts of the Corn Belt here, Eastern Corn Belt into New England. The Northwest has been where the target area has been. And the flow is going to continue there. Like I said, we have more moisture coming in today. There's some more that's coming in late this weekend. And we're going to add up some big snows late this weekend, I think, in the Cascades as well. But as this next system does start to take shape, all right, we do have the risk of some stronger storms on Friday night down here in the Southern Plains. That's a marginal risk. And then on Saturday, we're looking at much of the Delta region uh, down here into this side of Texas. Now, this is gonna be a difficult forecast to get right for our forecasters that predict the severe weather because lately we've seen the, the upper level setup for the shortwave trough not kind of balling up into a deep low that could really drive, you know, instability with great wind shear and a strong front into this area. So this is going to be tricky, but we want to just acknowledge that the Storm Prediction Center's got a pretty large area on Saturday night that they're watching for some stronger storms. Going right to the high-res models, let me back you up here. This is this morning. I'm going to play through the middle of today, getting into this evening, and let's get out there to Friday morning. You see the low curling up out of Saskatchewan into Manitoba, the snow on the back side of it here, some snow coming into parts of the Rockies as well. Now, we'll watch Friday night for some of the stronger storms here, but there is a shortwave that's going to come out of Kansas and Missouri and go right toward Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Tight little wave comes through here. Potential on the backside for some locally heavy snow, as you can see. And we're going to watch that system curl its way up over the Great Lakes. Now, that's not the quote-unquote main event. This is kind of the, the first push that we're watching here. This is all now translating much farther to the east with the best setup here. we got to get into seeing what that looks like by flipping over to our comparison of the GFS to the European model. Now, what has translated to the east is the deeper wave and when it finally kind of curls itself up into a tighter low. So we have to get all the way you know, past this week, or well, the Saturday into this weekend before it really starts to crank up east. So here we are on um, you know, Sunday midday. There's the next push of moisture in the northwest. And here's this elongated pressure trough that's going to try to curl up into a decent low, delivering some snow into parts of New England. After that, the flow comes out of the northwest, and we just quiet things down across much of the country going into most of next week. We'll keep our eye down here in this part of the plains, though, for a potential for another system about seven or eight days from now. All right, so let's get some of the numbers on this. This is the European model forecast for the next uh, seven days in terms of total precip, and there's the GFS. So again, European. GFS, pretty good alignment here. When we think about the snowfall, I do want to show you the European model. Late this weekend, adding up some heavy snows in the Cascades and Northern Rockies. Maybe a three to five inch event with the first system coming out here uh, Friday and early Saturday into North Dakota. But notice, not nothing. When we were looking earlier this week at some big snows here, gone. The system has all translated east, and that's where the best chance of getting some snow is. To do a comparison with the GFS, that's what the GFS has. So again, this is the uh, European and the GFS. A lot of what you see here is coming from that little short wave I showed you a moment ago this weekend that sneaks out of Iowa into Wisconsin. Bigger picture though, the drier spots are who I'm focusing on a lot right now. We just see a lot of the Canadian Prairie, Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, the Southwest, and this area is trended drier as well. We just look out there at that day 10 time period, and again, you see what I see. There's a ridge and some Northwest flow. So this is just not the right setup to really deliver a low, but we will keep an eye out. Can you kind of see a little trough in through here? We'll keep an eye out next week for the potential for something to come out of the Southern Plains. The models are picking up on it, CPC, this is the ECMWF, 
and the GFS are all watching something here, but mostly north of that, west of that, we're looking drier. Temperature-wise, just want to remind you that most of our cold air is on the other side of the hemisphere, where the polar vortex currently sits, uh, and, and it's going to take weeks for this, I think, to move out and to start to meander farther to the east, affect the jet stream, and then get over to North America. Until you see big ridges in Alaska or Greenland, we're not going to be able to displace this mile there. And we can see that. Just take a look at today's highs. As I just quickly play you through the next seven days, that warmth translates east. But where's the really cold Arctic air? We just don't have it through the middle part of this month. And we play it out even longer. And what you end up seeing here is just a lack of really, really cold air. There's some chillier air that shows up across the south, but that's not a true connection to Arctic air getting us out there to uh, the very beginning of astronomical winter, the 21st of December. In my longer range report, we go more in depth into this. So if you want to watch that one, watch it. But what you've got here is a comparison between the European Ensemble and the GFS. And this particular graphic is kind of highlighting the model differences. Here's my word or rule of thumb for you. Blend them. The European's been too wet. The GFS has been too dry. It's somewhere in between this that reality lives. And what reality is right now is that most of northern Brazil just had a top five driest November on record. It's been extremely wet south, one of the top five wettest souths. We've got this major, you know, kind of dipole here of super dry north, very, very wet south, and we can see it continuing in the models. Biggest thing for Argentina is both models trended wet, and that's a good signal for Argentina. Lastly, watch the longer range video because I discussed not only the longer range outlook from the European model, but I also discuss what's going on with our back half weighted winter here in North America. But I'm going to stop the short video here. Have a good rest of your day, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.